All right, we are finally in business. Oh my goodness, my webcam was being very awesome. Not, but thank God I can show you what's happening around. Um, got a little Esme here. This is a very good sign to have uh, FedEx. It's a little bit bigger. FedEx, go on, show your face. So you got a Scorpio and a Cancer. FedEx, come on, I know you're sleeping. Show your pearly blues. Come on, FedEx. Okay, they don't want to be good. So, whatever. Um, okay, let's get right into it. I just want to, like, triple, quadruple check. Because my technology is being very weird. Just, uh, hello, hello, hello. Test, test, test. Okay. We're good. So, yeah, I'm probably going to have to buy, I just had to buy a new, two new, I bought two new chargers. And I'm probably going to have to buy a new webcam. So everything's falling apart. I don't know what I do to my webcam. I don't do anything besides use it. But this is life, I guess, right? Um, and what is that noise that it keeps making? Okay, let me get my clock going over here. Start. Okay. So um, I have your chart pulled up with your initials. Um, let's go ahead and share that right now while we kind of jump into this reading i pray that there's no technological issues because i get this vibe that technology is trying to destroy me right now um just gotta be really careful with how i move my computer okay that's good so yeah uh interesting charts i don't know why my there's like this noise that keeps being made it's like doo -doo -doo -doo. i hope this doesn't continue anyways so yeah, we got uh, Capricorn rising with Neptune rising. Speaking of Neptune rising, I was just talking about my cat who has uh, Esme here who has Neptune rising, um, Pisces, but you know similar. Um, I mean, here's Capricorn, but you know still, uh, it's Neptune rising, and um, we got a nice uh, smooth Taurus moon with uh, Virgo stellium in the ninth house. I use whole signs, which your your ascendant's nine degrees, so. It's not going to change it tremendously. Um, but yeah, and then we have that, that Libra South node with Mercury on it and uh, Pluto on the 11th. We got some 12th house outers and we got Jupiter and Aries in the fourth. And then you have that, that thing I see so much with clients, just that Chiron in Gemini. So um, aspect wise, we're looking at, okay, nothing wrong with. Nothing or difficult with the moon. We got some sun square, Saturn square, Uranus, um, Mercury square, Neptune. Okay, I can't handle this noise. I'm going to pause this recording and, and fix this. One second. Okay, hopefully that fixed things. Um, so let's go back to the share screen. Um, and I, I flip back and forth between like sharing screen and showing my face. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of my, my clients are visual learners, big, big surprise there, huh? Um, and right brain type people. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's a correlation between those two, but yeah. So let's start with kind of the, uh, okay. Here, no more beeping sounds. Very good. Um, with the, you know, the fact that you have a lot of earth in your chart, that you have a, a grand trine. Uh, element I, I would i would call it a elemental grand trine well like, yeah it's it's a grand trine even degrees nine seventeen you know you have nine degrees over here you can see my cursor nine ascendant 17 moon and 18 sun and then mars also so um yeah i mean you know when you when you have a grand trine in your chart like that in earth um you know you're going to be a very 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 i mean it goes without saying very goal oriented individual um someone who you know is probably having not much trouble with uh you know when, when i think of a of, of a lot of earth i think of a lot a lot a few different things come to my mind right so the first thing is obviously you know someone who once they put their mind in something they're able by the way just just so you know like when i do readings i like to kind of stand up move around i'll hold crystals i'll do 
I'll be, I'll do a bunch of random stuff. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll, sometimes I like access books, notes, whatever. Like I just, I, I'm very like free when I do my readings. Um, it's like an art to me. So definitely. Yeah. So, 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 um, let's talk about having an excess of earth before we really dive into kind of like the specifics. So an excess, excess of earth, right. Um, uh, means that there is, um, less, in other elements now the question is what does that mean first of all <laughs> um because you know the three earth signs as we know are capricorn taurus and virgo and you have them all present now lacking water which i don't see any of the personal planets in water you have one so the only personal planet personal planets are your big three sun moon ascendant and the and mercury so you have mercury and air so air you know you have some air um, Jupiter is kind of like a middle planet, like, so you have it in Aries, um, but you know, it's, it's really the, the, the big six that have like conscious, um, I guess you could say like properties or, 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 um, functions within our, 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 our self, you could say not that the other planets don't have an effect. They do, but it's just the, they're more societal planets. They, they have a different type of energy to them. Um, so yeah, with outer planets, you know, I look at them more in terms of like, okay, what are what what's it doing for the karma? Uh, what house is is it in? Like, of course, I could I could speak about what it means to have, you know, Neptune in in Capricorn, but then it's like, okay, everyone born within like a, I don't know how many year period it is for Neptune, but for Pluto, just to give you an example, everyone born between eighty four and ninety eight had the same Pluto and Scorpio, so it's way more important for the signs. Um, the big six, the personal planets, but also Jupiter sign is important. And the Chiron sign I find to be very, 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 very um, telling. So this is just kind of how I do my astrology. Maybe other astrologers do it differently. Um, but yeah, so lots of Earth. Um, there can be, you know, there, there, there can definitely be some stagnancy that can happen. Um, now, we, we also, of course, have to like include the aspects, um, which an aspect, as, 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 you, as you may know, a lot of astrologers skip over it is really like what ties the, the chart together, what makes every chart unique. So for example, um, you see here, this is the aspect grid. This indicates sun square, Saturn, sun square Uranus. If you look on your chart, you see your sun is here. Um, and it is 90 degrees away. It doesn't have to be exact, right? Here it would be like, uh, you know, 90, uh, or I guess 86 um, degrees away. And, here it would be uh, 94, um, but it's still a square between these planets and your sun. And then also, um, you know, the, let's see, with Mars, yeah, like that whole stellium is getting squared, um, all of Venus, yeah, Venus for sure too. Um, so, yeah, so there's lots, lots, lots to talk about there. Um, but basically, like, to, to, to continue what I was saying, um, having a lot of earth, what I've noticed with people who have a lot of earth is, you know, they, they, they really need to find that, that original drive, right? Because like when you, when you don't have that fire, yes, you have Jupiter and Aries, right? Like that, that can be very, very enterprising and, 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 um, and it can be, it, it can be a go-getter energy, but, um, you know, it's still, it's still, I, I categorize Jupiter more as like a middle planet, if that makes sense. Um, so when you have lots of earth, yeah, there can be stagnancy. Sometimes people with lots of earth need like a kick in the butt to really get moving in life. Um, but once they do find that path, you know, that they're on, and I'll switch it back to my face. Um, it's really hard to stop them. Like they, they're the, they're, they're the types who can just like really like continue to succeed in whatever they put their mind to. Right. Um, there's not like, and another really cool thing about earth is that there's this level of consistency, right? There's this level of like, um, and, 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 and take this in like an, an intuitive type of way, right? Like there's this level of like being able to kind of, at some, in some way, and of course the aspects will, will give more, 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 uh, more to this. Um, wake up each day and, on some level, be similar 
not exactly the same, but similar to kind of how you were before, right? Uh, or the day, day, after, day after day after day, right? So, 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 like I'll give you like an example, like someone who has a lot of earth in their chart would be very good at a business like real estate, for example, where it really requires you to be patient and you know to continuously like um, develop your skills, hold for long periods of time, um, and not be like all impulsive and selling and like like too too soon or whatever like like it, it it really makes one consistent now but the thing with with a lot of earth and you know especially with a lot of virgo is that there can be a a as you probably know like it can make someone very very overly critical of themselves right so um you know with your sun and, and venus and mars there there's definitely an element of like um i'm sure and you got the follow up. I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't have my notes in front of me, but but I'm I'm nearly positive you got the follow up. So we'll we'll talk about that. Um, but there's definitely a, a level of perfectionism that that um someone that has these plants um typically typically has. Now they're they are in the ninth house, which we'll get into, um, which is interesting and very 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 like um very interesting how that would combine with the Virgo. Because the ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius, so it's it's all about all about like finding like higher truth and philosophy and traveling and it's a it's a fire house. So you know that can definitely kind of add some 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 some, some more fire, even though it's it's not a planet, it's or a sign. It's still like um like in the house represents like an area of life, right? So um. Yeah, so Virgo w with the perfectionism, right? There's this this level of um a hundred or zero, right? I tell all my clients this, whether it's through my counseling or through my my astrology, that um a lot of people that have a lot of Virgo, they can they can tend to have this 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 attitude where it's like if I can't get they they set like un impossible like bars for themselves, like I had to I have to get here, you know, like here, and if I don't get here then um, I suck, right? And lots of people I've noticed that have lots of Earth, they're very, very hard on themselves. Now, your, your, your Taurus moon is a very, very beautiful moon placement. I'll, I'll speak about how that kind of complements everything uh, shortly. Um, but yeah, the Virgo part, um, it's very, very good at you know, for success and very, very good for, for kind of like, you know how Virgos are, you know, like, like the to-do list, the routine, the you know, very health oriented, very service oriented, very, very, you know, like if, like I, I had a, a poll the other day, something like, like, who would you trust? Like, like, like basically any polls where like the first, like, you, I don't know if you see my, I, you do see my stories, like any polls where like the stars, like, who would you trust to? It's like, I'm always winning Virgo, you know, my mom's a Virgo, my best friend's a Virgo. Um, they're super dependable people. Now here's, I'm happy you came to me because like I have a very interesting take on Virgo, right? Just check this out. And before that, let me kind of finish because I know how you Virgos are with, um, uh, let me finish my perfectionism, my perfectionism speech and don't worry, I'll wrap back around the grand trine, but, but I want to do that before I talk about like the, 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 the earth magic that I, I find in Virgo because it's this very enigmatic sign, um, c because it's the opposite sign of Pisces. Um, I have something in my eye again. This happened like two readings ago. I don't know what is happening. The bugs are attacking me during my readings. Um, but um, yeah, basically, like it's 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 all about learning self compassion. That's like the lifelong quest for the Virgo is to learn self compassion and to really um, learn to kind of understand that, like you know, maybe one day, like if you go on like a scale of zero to one hundred. Maybe one day your best will be like a 70, right? And maybe the next day it will be like an 80. Maybe the next day it'll be like a 40. Maybe the next day it'll be like a 10. So the key, and then maybe the next day after that, it'll be 100, then 100 again, then 90, then 90, then 90. You know, it's, it's, it's just like the ebbs and flows. And um, it's all about self-compassion. The way I look at it is it's like, how can you, how can, how can I, or how can you treat yourself how you would treat your best friend? Because Virgos, they're so, Oh, like extremely aware of all the subtleties, right? All the little things. And sometimes they can almost like, like I, I always say it like this, like um, the Virgo 
is right here, right? Like very high up. But they think sometimes that they're down here and they think that other people are up here when in reality, other people are down here and Virgos are up here, right? But they have such an, they're so observant and they notice every little thing. So like it can, it can be difficult, especially with Virgo Mars to, um, to kind of like not project like imagine like um project like like your own imperfections onto others which you know has huge relationship implications because you know people with venus you know in mars like in virgo like they, they can really expect this like perfection out of um their partners as well so it goes both ways so it's like this this real inner battle that has inner journey that has to be overcome and have to, I'm, I, whenever i have virgo clients i'm always like so much more careful with my vocabulary like i'm like all right you gotta, you gotta be more but that's the thing is like it's op i'm a pisces so it's opposite pisces pisces in my my mercury is there so pisces can be a little, a little bit vague in their communication but like i have saturn conjuncted and i have a, a kazemi with my my son and my mercury so it kind of makes me a little bit more thank god in my saturn capricorn sixth house it makes me a little bit more um precise with my communication and Virgo-esque, which is what I'm about to get into after this with the whole Pisces Virgo thing. But um, yeah, so like getting past that, learning to like kind of just like let go, you know, that's that's the thing with Virgo is, is learning to just like let go, understand that like you can't always be perfect. Um, you know, the fact that you hold yourself to such high standards is can be a double-edged sword. It can be a great thing for achievement, but it can be a horrible thing when you're spending like I think of my brother who has you know Mars and Virgo and Capricorn Moon, and who spends so much time like like anxious thinking about like like how can I optimize myself almost you know like 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 I'm doing this wrong I'm doing that wrong you know but it's like during that time where you might be worrying or might be anxious because like having a lot of Virgo sorry I keep scratching my nose I have like allergies it's always like this during summer um. Like during that time, you could be like creating or you could be having fun or you could be pioneering, which, you know, with your North Node Aries in the fourth house, it's like, you know, you're you're meant to be someone who who's pioneering. What's interesting is, like I said, real estate. And now I'm like, I don't know. Fourth house is it rules family, but it also, you know, can can relate to like businesses like real estate that that or like business like restaurants that like relate to the home. Right. Because. Yeah, North Node Aries is very like uh, you're trying to like we'll get towards that, but you're really trying to move towards a, a level of like independence and individual individualization and and really like doing things on your own watch in this lifetime. Leadership stuff like that, right? Being your own person, where you're not like swayed too much by relationships and and uh, social status and things like that, where you're really trying to kind of like figure out who you are. So back to, to what I was saying. Um, yeah. So, so, so overcoming that, you know, having a sense of humor about life. And, and by the way, like I, I haven't looked at any photos of you. I know nothing about you. All I can like know is that you have a really good energy through your, through your messages, which I, I, I purposely don't look at anything um for any of my clients until after i've done the reading um so yeah that's kind of kind of like the over over overlay of like like the big thing with virgo is like um how can how can you channel that energy in a, in a really positive way you know um now for you like a very high like kind of moving towards like the the earth magic kind of thing i was, I was going to speak about next with virgo is that it's very interesting to me that some of the most spiritual and like chill, easygoing people I know are Virgos. Like, I don't know if you've heard my podcast, Jesse and Trey podcast. So on Spotify and every, every it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in, it's the link. It's in the link in my bio. He's a double Virgo. So you, know, you might, you might really resonate with him. Um, and we're going to start, we haven't done like an episode in like three months or something like that, but we're going to get back to it. Both we've both just been really busy and on opposite timelines. It's four a.m. He's gonna wake up in a few hours. I'm gonna go to sleep when he wakes up. Maybe after that. But um, yeah. So 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 with Virgo with with the whole Earth magic thing, it's like the opposite sign is Pisces. So that's what's called an axis. 
So sometimes Virgos, you know, in Pisces is this very like magical, mystical, spiritual sign. Um, and it deal and sometimes like you can think of an axis as like a the same energy but opposite. So sometimes people who are very Virgo but they're spiritual, they tend to kind of like um like be more on the Pisces side, right? And and be really, really into like things like mysticism and um the esoteric and, and high spirituality and connection with the divine. Because ultimately, when I think of high, high, high Virgo, I think of the word purity. Now, that can easily get confound, con, confounded with perfectionism. Now, when I think of purity, I think of this white ball, right? But like within the white ball, like this white, beautiful pearl, this big, white, beautiful white pearl. That's what, what I think about when I think of, of high Virgo. But there's still a level of compassion for yourself and your shortcomings within that. But it's about once you learn to love those and see that like every single person has so many imperfections. I don't care what they appear like, like how perfect they appear on social media or or in person or whatever. It's like everyone has them. Virgo are just more aware of the external ones. Right. Scorpio might be more aware of like the internal ones, um, just as an example. But Virgo is very aware of like, you know the external ones, which that's why Virgo can often be um, associated with anxiety. Like lots of people, lots of Virgos can have like anxiety disorders. So um, because they're, they're just so in the moment, they're so observant. But you can imagine how good that could be for like so many careers and so many um, areas of life, but how it can be detrimental in other ones. Right. So the channel for that, because you know, it's ruling, it rules the sixth house. And I'll, I'll go back to the chart a little bit. Um, is through, you know, finding that purpose, find, like finding like w w where you're able to like really like be of service, right, to humanity. Because it's a very, like Pisces and Virgo, like that's the axis of service, right? And um, when Virgo's in, in your moon's in Taurus, so so that's going to you know, co uh, complement your Virgo side very well. And you have an exact trine near like a 17 to 18, like nearly an exact trine with your sun, your moon, which is one of the best aspects in all astrology. Uh, the metaphor I would give for that is like, if you were a ship, right? Like going down the ocean and you had two captains, one's your sun, one's your moon, your yin, your yang. Um, they would both be headed in the same direction. They're very, there's a, a, a and then your sun, if you want to add like the third captain, it's in Capricorn, the other earth sign. So it's like, um, it's, it, it's definitely someone who, who isn't kind of like conflicted and headed in all these different directions. Right. So it's very, very, very good for success. Very, very good for success. Um, and whatever you put your mind to. Now, um, so yeah, I think like 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 when you have this much Virgo, you can be someone who can be very practical with your spirituality. Someone who can like, for example, understand that in order to really get to the highest spiritual level, there's uh, you know, like for example, my friend, he like I don't know if he does anymore, but he used to like have like a schedule of like you know, at this time, I'm going to be doing yoga. At this time, I'm going to be doing whatever the fuck that he did with this, like, baton on his, like, st on, like, on his, like, skin. Uh, and this time, I'm going to meditate. So he basically like, kind of created, like, a schedule around his, like, spirituality, which is, you know, very, very, very fruitful for him. Um, and also around his learning, you know, and in, in, in his uh, kind of life purpose and, and plans that, that revolved around kind of that higher meaning. So this is... Um, the earth magic like you can be someone who works with alchemy or someone who works with anything that's like like kind of you know earthy right anything innate you know natural uh whether it's like holistic medicine whatever it might be now interesting um is that um with the moon and taurus and i'm sure you saw my or i'm not sure i have no idea but you may have seen my rankings of like easiest moon signs to have or hardest to easiest and i, I don't know if taurus is one or two it's like like the i don't like saying best or worst in astrology but like let's say like easiest moon signs because when you have a taurus moon you're it's very easy for you to kind of be in touch with your emotions and to express your emotions and to meet your own emotional needs um now, one thing again about about Taurus is that there is this thing with risk taking that can be difficult, right? And by the way, I'm 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 the astrologer that that gives everything. I, I give the good, the bad, the ugly. I I give I give everything because I want my clients to grow, 
you know, I want them to, I don't want to just be this fiery astrologer um, that says everything is so perfect. I mean, this is amazing. I'm just like, I like to give, you know, I, cause people come for growth, you know, they want to know, they want to get, they understand the chart, but they also want to have ideas of how they can grow. So Taurus moon, it usually creates a very happy person. Generally, like, a, and that's a big statement, but like it's trying Venus, it's trying Mars, it's trying all of your Virgo parents. So, it's um you know it's very good for for everything in that in that regard right um the thing though that you have to watch out for is like um not being willing to take risks right not being willing to take risks and um being so happy with like the way things are that um you might be unwilling to kind of like take that leap of faith into who knows where because there's like such a, especially with Jupiter conjunct your IC, your excuse me, your your IC, that indicates like you know typically a very very like optimistic, generous, nice, um, positive childhood experience, right? Usually, right? And especially um, with Sun trine uh, Moon, that typically indicates like a very nice relationship um, with your parents. Uh, especially like them with each other and, you know, most likely them with you. Although, you know, your son, there could be some issues with the father. If, if that's, if the, if the son represents your father in your chart, which it doesn't always, um, sun square Saturn, sun square Uranus, you know, it could indicate some issues there. And I digress. Um, so yeah, with, with moon and Taurus, it's definitely like, um, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's very, very like uh all you know there's an emotional need to kind of be in touch with your senses um there's an emotional need for 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 stability for groundedness for for feeling secure you know in 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 your obviously like in your home environment but also like in your own body so it's really important to do things that and it probably comes very naturally to you like things like yoga um hiking you know things that that kind of get you embodied you know um with some of those like nice aspects right as i was saying before um you know like with the sun and the moon it, it typically gives a very well integrated personality um and it's very very good for like the like work like the career um and very good for like a harmonious like home life as well and um you know with the moon in in venus and mars um it's 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 more about Kind of, it gives kind of like a, a like with Venus and Moon, it's like a, a very light-hearted personality, you could say, um, like a love a love of like like beauty, art, all these things, right? Especially with Taurus Moon, it's ruled by Venus, so it's like there's definitely this emotional need to kind of be, you know, like to to feel to feel that art, you know, um, to feel to feel some some kind of connection to um, to 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 art of whatever it is whether you're creating it also like you know working with your hands right working with your hands touching earth like gardening you know like that's something that taurus moons um can really really love doing and um yeah like like with with uh what was the other one it was it was, it was mars um that makes one very like resourceful um it's 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 really good for your lack of fire because it, it gives you like it can it can usually give like kind of like this uh this um ability to get projects under the way under underway without like any delay like quick acting it's also very 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 good for health mental and physical and yeah very like energetic um and yeah so with um that said you know that then the the capricorn rising um with neptune there that's probably the part of you that's that you know having neptune on your ascendant regardless of whatever sign it kind of that actually helps the last you, so you see how 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 you lack these elements but i'm i'm showing you how you're actually getting these elements neptune rules pisces right so with the fact that you have neptune rising it makes you kind of like a nep uh Pisces of uh, Capricorn slash Pisces rising in, in a sense, right? Um, you know, Neptune is that planet of um of like uh, that otherworldly energy, right? Like high spiritualism, um, 
you know, like um, it, it makes you very, very empathetic. Um, it makes you very, very in touch with the with the psychic world, if you want to call it that, with the spiritual world, with other people's energies. So, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a good one. And um, it makes another thing about it is that it really, really makes you want to have a life um, that where you're able to kind of imprint your own imagination into your everyday life. And with Capricorn, which is a very like forthcoming, you know, it's a cardinal sign. So it is, you know, it, yeah, you like fire, but Capricorn is like, it, it is, it can be very self start, self starting, very ambitious. Um, it, it, it's interesting to, 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 to try to think, and we'll talk more about this in the fall. Make sure you take notes of this and you will, I don't even have to tell the Virgo to take notes. Um, but like, yeah, like it's important to kind of like, to 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 consider like how those two work together because um my my guess would be if you didn't have neptune rising that you might not be as interested in things like spirituality because typically people who have tons of earth they're way more logical based logical lo logic based and it's hard to make sense of um something like astrology but you know taurus moon you know it, like i said it's 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 exalted in that sign um it's 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 very very um you know powerful so um another really cool thing about taurus moon is like they're they're so resourceful right and it's very very good for self-esteem um when there's a problem they they always look for, like the most effective way to, to, to handle it like in the moments and when there's an emotional issue they they deal with it then in that moment you know they, they they're not like aquarius or gemini moons where they're like okay i'll, I'll feel the emotional uh like I'll feel the emo the emotional kind of like effect of this in six months, you know, it's like, I'm feeling this now. Um, and also, you know, moon and Taurus, you know, they are not like impressionable. They, they take their time to form opinions um, and come to decisions on like their plan, what they want to do, as I kind of mentioned before. Um, it's also like someone who's very, very resourceful. Like, like there's an, there's definitely like, <laughs> you saw my very simple, like the most materialistic Taurus, you know, like there's an emotional need for abundance, right? And that can be inner abundance or outer abundance. So, um, I, I, I would imagine that, that that's not something that you struggle with, uh, just taking it, I guess. Um, where's your Saturn? 12th house. Okay. So, um, yeah, like very, also very, very romantic, um, and in relationships, you're really going to, like, want someone who, like, who you can be very, very close with on that physical level, who you can depend on, like, like really, really depend on, especially being a Virgo. Um, and security is very, very important, right? So it has to, the level of commitment has to be very high, and um, it has to be very comfortable. You have to feel very comfortable in your own body within the relationship. And, um, yeah, have that equal devotion, right? So you're really looking for that, that, that true soulmate, right? Where there's like real, real, like, um, faithfulness and, um, yeah. But one other thing, and this, this has to do with Taurus in general, which is also like with relationships is that there can be sometimes a tendency to stay in, in unhappy relationships of all kinds, not just romantic, um, you know, um, for too long, even if they're, you know, if, like if it's like an unhappy marriage, like, um, cause there's such, such a need for security and there's that resistance to change that sometimes, like I said, there, there there's that, 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 that shutdown from new experiences that can come, come, come up. So I would ask you like, if that has played out or plays out or, or whatever, how, how that is affecting you in your life. And, um, yeah, but yeah, overall, you know, like, like very patient, um, you know, very, very trustworthy and, um, yeah, kind of like a bright light and very, very good for, for, for like, um, material wealth. Let's sip my tea right now. So, um, 
yeah, there's just like a ton, like w with it being like in Virgo, your son, like a ton um, of endurance and stability um, and persistence, right? Because Taurus is also very persistent. So like you are a, succeed a successful person. There's no way you're not. I mean, we'll see what the rest of the chart says, but yeah, there's, I'd be very, very surprised. If you're like, um, you know, not, not, um, in a good position with career and stuff like that. The only, the only th way that that could happen is if that, that, that low Virgo energy is affecting you and you're like really hard on yourself. And if that were the case, then, um, you know, maybe you could benefit from some astrological counseling with me. I do that. I love doing it. I keep, I have like low rates for that. Um, and that's where we take everything in this reading. We, we go like a step, a step deeper. Um, yeah. So let's talk about some of the, some of the sun aspects, um, or, I guess before that, like a little bit more about like, I guess the ascendant and let me flash my face back again, the, the ascendant with Neptune, um, you know, just basically like, you know, just, just, just Capricorn rising in general, you know, like you're, you're like, if, if there's two people, let's say you're applying for a job, right. Um, it's you and four other people. You guys are exactly equally qualified, right you will get the job the capricorn rising person because they put out that that they they, they have they're they're so responsible and they're so ambitious and that it's your rising and it's mixed with that neptune which also gives you this real dreaminess to your external appearance and your way of, of life so it kind of mixes together this like artistic um imaginative intuitive mystical like anything is possible um, imprinting your imagination onto your daily life energy with this very solid Capricornian self. So it's like, like really good for like, you know, pursuing your purpose as I've been talking about. Um, and you know, the employer, and I'm just giving this example because it can be applied to anything would see you as this very reliable person, this person they can count on when they're out of the office to, to, to take control, for example. Right. Um, now, you're probably someone who approaches things very cautiously. Um, you like to really like know before you uh, just throw yourself into anything. Um, now, is Mars... One second. So, yeah, M Mars is far enough from square from Uranus, like in a square, to where I wouldn't like worry about that square being too wild. But you do have Sun square Uranus. So... Sun square Uranus is very interesting with this chart. Now I'll explain why. Um, you've heard what I've said so far. My face is showing right. Yeah. So Sun square Uranus is the ultimate rebellious energy, right? It's an energy of someone who, even if you have a Taurus moon, you know, um, even if you're a Virgo. It's someone who still wants to seek kind of like, like it's, it's like the question, like what else is out there? You know, like, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm doing good. But like, I want to know, like you getting this reading, for example, and I have no idea. Maybe you have your own like spiritual business. Like a, it's very like feel good. You know, that guy who does, you know, all, all, I'm sure you know who he is. He's a Virgo, you know, a, a random example. So like, you meet so many spiritual Virgos. Like I'm, I'm not. I'm like I'm never surprised when like I do a reading for a Virgo, and then we have the follow up, and they're like, "Yeah, I run this store. We sell crystals. We do tarot. Um, you know, it's been very successful." I'm like, "God damn!" Because that that that's there's that Earth energy that's able to to take what it wants and create success out of it. And I haven't even gotten into the ninth house and the house um ener energies of of these plants. Um, but like I, you know, I'm 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 big on it. I'm a huge aspect astrologer i'm all about aspects right um some astrology you, you can get a reading from an astrologer who will literally like not talk about aspects it's actually um sadly it's 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 kind of common um but yeah like the sun in, in square uranus it like and it, i think it, usually it's a, it's a it's a it's a rough one to have but i kind of like it in your chart you see this is why astrology has to be taken all like in the, in this kind of cosmic puzzle right like where you you can't take it in a vacuum because it makes you really want to do things your own way. 
And um, it's very, very good for intelligence. Of course, Virgo is very good for intelligence, ruled by Mercury. Um, but it makes you really want to stand out, right? Um, and it, it speaks more to your North Node, right? The North Node astrology is kind of like your destiny point. Like it's like where you're really trying to get, right? On like a on a on a big soul level. So it kind of this kind of helps that because it makes you want to be different. It makes you want to be pioneering, which your North Node Aries is asking you to be. Um, so it can make one kind of uh, rebellious, abrupt, but the fact that you have all these other planets, I feel like it's probably done in a way that, that doesn't cause so many difficulties. Because um, like there is a need for change. So this this aspect actually kind of helps that. Um, but sometimes like very traditional people can kind of like, like usually like when I, when I speak about this aspect, it's like, um, like it's like an energy that can kind of, I mean, maybe it's like your love for, for spirituality. Right. I mean, I have no idea if you get like, like, like what level you're at, like, like in terms of like, if you're someone who practices like astrology or tarot or, 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 you know, some type of healing, you know, that that's kind of out of the norm, but like more traditional people can get kind of get offended by that. Right. Um, and yeah, it can also be like a very challenging, like like pro like provoking and challenging aspect, like in terms of like towards other people, right? So um, yeah, but um, I think I you know Uranus is in the sun. It can, in, especially you know with with um, Venus, it can give like a very like in, like a kind of unique sense of humor that like annoying ass people can be offended by. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very like based on like talents and very inventive energy. Um, I think it pushes people towards like, you know, like, like some, some form of like their own brilliance. And the fact that it's in the 12th house, that's an amazing place to have Uranus. They have, you have Saturn there too. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit, but like, um, you know, that, that like overall, like, you know, Uranus in the 12th house is like, it, it, it gives someone the ability to kind of have these like flashes, like when they're like, say you're meditating, you'll just get these downloads and you'll, you'll just know the future, you know? Um, and it can be very, very good for, for like, like for, for, um, for, for anything. Right. So your, your dream life and all that. And while I'm on the subject, I might as well kind of like go into it a little bit. Like Saturn there is, is kind of pushing some of that away. So there's this kind of battle between the two. Does that make sense? Um, because like, the Uranus there, it, it loves being there because it, 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 it just like it, 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 it provides you with this connection to like the collective unconscious, you know, which you already have with the, the Neptune rising. Um, but Saturn can create all kinds of like and you probably like overcame a lot of these like in your in your uh, Saturn return, which happened a few years back. Um, but like Saturn in 12th house and I know all about this one. My girlfriend has it. I know tons of people who have it. It can create all kinds of fears of the unknown, fears of spirits, like fears of like, um, like really. So, so maybe like spirituality and, and this, like maybe this is like a, a real long process. Uh, uh, and, you know, it, it's always different. Like it, it really does. You know, a lot depends on like the family you came from. You know, if your mom was like, um, you know, like a very open minded person or your dad was too, like, you know, that can obviously play a huge effect. But overall, like, you know, there's one part of you that's like having like potentially all these like very sh like not strange but like 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 seeing aliens or like you know seeing spirits or like being in connection with your guides but then this other part of you that's like kind of afraid of that and also Saturn in the 12th house can create like um hidden enemies um and it can kind of hold you back and tell the so my guess is that this when the Saturn return was when you maybe and this could be totally wrong you have to tell me please tell me if I'm right or wrong like a, around the Saturn return is when you probably start to like really confront a lot of these like fears. Um, like it's like the fear of anything hidden and really start to like kind of open up that like high spiritual energy in your chart. Right. Um, another thing about like the Saturn of the 12th is that like people feel like their boundaries are threatened. Um, so what it takes is it takes like a very serious examination, which you're able to do with all this earth energy of the hidden realms. Um, in order to conquer your fears. So, yeah. So it's not necessarily like that bad of a, like a horrible placement because like, um, it can make someone more serious about their like study of 
um, whether it's, you know, anything that, that relates to Neptune, right? Which is your ascendant. So, yeah. And the fact that it's also your chart ruler because you're, you're a, a Capricorn, um, a Capricorn rising that that would add even further impetus to the fact to everything I said about the Saturn return being so important for you and so life changing. But yeah, like with the Uranus, it's just like all these intuitive flashes. Um, you could like be like working in like an interesting kind of different type of like institution, whether it's like an alternative healing or who knows what it is, right? Um, something that's very, very random and probably impossible for me to guess. Um, but yeah, it gives you like this, this, this ability to really probe deep into like the human psyche in a very like kind of uh, unusual way. And you, you're, you have like this imprint with that, that grand trine of someone who like, whenever you put your, your, your mind to anything, like you can manifest, you can manifest anything, anything you put your mind to it, 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 it works like maybe not right away, but because you have that, um, that, uh, I'm searching something really quickly. But because you have that that energy, it's like that patience of the earth. Um, it's gonna work out, right? It's gonna work out eventually. I'm looking for one thing really quickly. Now, I one thing I will add. This has nothing to do with this reading. Is that I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting. So this is what like everyone's doing these days. It's fucking magical. And I, I block out like the entire day of my schedule for people who do this is instead of getting just the follow-up, getting the follow-up, I just started blinking out, uh, follow, get, adding the current astrology reading, which is a live reading to the follow-up. I found this to be like the best thing um, because the follow-up, it's like, you know, we, we go over everything and then we move right into the current astrology and the reason I say that, well, I say that I'm saying that to everyone these days because it's it's been unbelievable. Um, and I record them. I don't post those public. I would never post someone's face public ever, ever. Uh, I post those as like, you know, it's your choice, but um, like usually unlist like unlisted YouTube videos that only the person with the link can see, or you know, I can even email it. Like whatever. People have different things with privacy. Obviously, like an unlisted YouTube video, no one's gonna no one no one's gonna see it unless they have the link which only you have the link. <laughs> um, but what the point I was making is that because you have this grand trine, it means that every, like when you have, like, let's say um, Pluto, right? Let's say for the sake of argument or a, a giving example, like um, let's say, mm, well, Uranus right now is like literally on your moon. So, okay, that's crazy. So, so okay, so Uranus right now, Transit Uranus is, where is it exactly? Is it exactly on your moon? One second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, it's like at 18 degrees, so it's like literally like like right on your moon. Now, it's also exactly trining your sun. And you're, you know, it's trining your Venus, right? So it's like wh wh whenever you have one um transit it hits and then it's also like you know i guess it's past your ascendant but like the point is that because all these planets are so connected um when one planet does come through you feel that planet in so many different ways like i'll give you the example of uranus and i'll i'll, I'll share the screen to kind of like really exemplify this for a moment i'll go back to my face I'm not going to get into like, you know, what, what that means and the implications and, and, and the current astrology reading is way more than just transits. It's solar return, it's progressions, it's annual perfections. It's, um, you know, I sometimes going to solar arc, um, you know, the main transits you have to, you have to really look at. And, you know, we talk about everything. And also I, I have two master's degrees in, in, in psychology. So I, I implement that as well as I told you, but okay, let's give an example. So let's say Uranus, it, when it was at five degrees um taurus right it moves very slowly that would have trined your ascent uh your or uh, let's start nine so that would have trined your ascendant right and it would also have trined your mars and you can see my cursor so then uranus keeps moving a little bit and it gets to about let's say 
let's say it gets it, it's like let's say it's around yeah let's let's say it, well it gets when it's at 12 it's exactly trining your your mars so you see it's it's already hit ascendant um it's it, it, it's hitting like like nearly every planet right and then it gets to 17 around 17 it's conjunct your moon big time for massive massive change hence probably like why you're, you're you're you know maybe this is another big reason why you're getting into into astrology and, and really like like it's you're feeling like a push towards this huge change i have to like dive deeper into the astrology to really understand it further but what's happening also is that it's also um trining your 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 son which is a, a different transit right and then it moves a little bit further and then it trines your venus you know you see, you see what i'm saying so like Every time that there's like, and of course there's there's tons of other planets, you know, um, like uh, let's think, like Neptune for example. Neptune's in Pisces right now, so um, where's Pisces? So Neptune, at the moment, is just up, it's opposing your Venus. Right before that, it was opposing your Sun. Right before that, it was opposing your mars so you've been feeling this crazy neptune opposite energy lately and um you know with that said um at that same time though it would have been trying it or sextiling your moon which is a way easier aspect so when you have this many connections in your chart it, it makes it extremely like the current astrology extremely important to understand okay that's my spiel and let me know if you're into that. I give a special price of 180. Usually it's 250. It's a hour that la it's a uh, blah, 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 blah. it's a reading that lasts usually around 90 minutes. Um, I say between one and two hours, but like um, the average, like the one the one I did yesterday was um, I think it was like two hours and 35 minutes total. But I keep it like so you don't feel brain dead by the end. That's my goal, and I've kind of like. Um, made it so so that that's possible. But as a Virgo, there's no worry of being brain dead. There's no possible chance. Um, so yeah, just wanted to kind of talk about that. But um, yeah, so it's it's very very auspicious this grand trine. Um, and um, yeah, super good for for stability and structure when it's in Earth. Um. Really, and like I said, like all about manifesting, bringing ideas to life. You have the idea, boom, because you're so stable, practical, grounded, centered. It just, it gets done, you know? You, you know how to get things done. You know that it takes step A, step B, step C, step C, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, so it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so besides that, um, you know, the fact that, you know, you have all of these planets, um, I'll show again in the ninth house, right? Like you have, um, you know, all these babies in the ninth house, and then you have your moon in the fifth. Let's start with the moon in the fifth. That's 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 easy. So moon in the fifth in Taurus is just ultimate creativity, right? Like fifth house is the house of Leo, and you're you know you so so makes me think that you're probably a very creative person, someone who likes to do art or. Or whatever your form is, you probably and because you're such a manifester, you're probably someone who actually gets it done. You know, you probably have many, many hobbies and, and different creative hobbies that give you an amazing feeling of, of emotional fulfillment. It's a beautiful placement. I still haven't even talked about your sun's square. Well, I've, I've talked about the 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 Uranus, but not the, the not the Saturn. I haven't forgotten. I don't forget. And then there's other ones too. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that. Also, it, it's very like good for like being in touch with your inner child and having fun. It's also very um good for 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 um children, and for being a great mother and really having a lot of emotional fulfillment from that part of life. And with your North Node in the fourth house, um, that could also you know be saying that like you know children and family are playing a very high role in your karma. Now, um, with you know the ninth house, that's basically saying that all this Virgo energy is being pushed towards right now i'm standing up just telling you walk around a little bit um it's being pushed towards like how can i find my my truth like you either like my truth or universal truth whatever you want to call it right like 
Like, like, what is it? You know, what is it? And being able to like implement um, different strategies, different um, kind of like, you know, um, I always want to say things. I'm like, stop saying the word things, Jesse. Um, but implement different, different. Um, I guess you could say like, yeah, strategies, different, different um, routines, different. Yeah, like methods, whatever to to get to that point, you know, like 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 um, but yeah, like a huge part of your life purpose, your son in the ninth house is like traveling is probably huge for you, whether it's traveling physically or metaphorically, right? And and really finding that true philosophy. I'm putting a uh, I just started doing uh the Swedish chewing tobacco. I'm so honest, <laughs> just like saying everything I'm doing. But like, yeah, I'm putting in a uh, chewing tobacco right now. Like not the gross American kind. You're from Philippines. Yeah, it's like the, the sexier Swedish kind that has this, the taste of apple mint. But I never get addicted to tobacco. I do it for like a little bit. Then I'm just like, eh, I'm done. Um, so yeah, so, so, so there's a huge push towards that. Now, I need to speak a little bit more about like the Mars and Virgo because it is square Saturn. So um that is amazing for success but what it can do is that it can really in your first 29 and a half years give you lots of pushback like you feel like you're like taking one step forward and then you're getting pushed two steps back then three steps forward then two steps back and it's like always these things that kind of come in your way now the amazing thing about this is that now the Saturn turn is gone you're left and so many of the most successful people have this. I'm serious. They have like the, the Mars and square, uh, they have like square, uh, Saturn square Mars. It gives you this amazing work, work ethic. And it's like all that determination that you had that you needed to get past the setbacks. Suddenly the setbacks go away, right? At the Saturn return. So I just want to add that in there. But also I need to say with Mars and Virgo, the low vibe of that, and I see this more in men than women, is being a buzzkill. Right. Being a buzzkill um, in the sense of like, like I talked about it earlier, like like projecting your own like insecurities and your own um, imperfections on other people in relationships and having like with the Venus in, in Virgo with the love language stuff. It's like having like, yeah, unrealistic expectations. As I said before. So it's all about like understanding no one's perfect. Um, also, your love language will be like like very like like the Virgo love language typically is about like 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 you show your love by like like the things you do for people, like what you're willing to kind of sacrifice. Like, for example, like I, I'm the same way. I don't have Virgo. Like I show my love by, um, like, I don't want to make it sound like, like it's like money, but like, like, like me being willing to like stay up for, you know, hours and help you with a fucking horrible situation, pay money to, to, to fly you back from some, you know, country you're in that that you're in a bad situation i don't know it's a random example or like cleaning the entire house like like with my mom for example like like when she's like gone to ten play tennis for a few hours like like the house is 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 not you know she's a virgo so it's like you know to, to everyone else it's like perfectly clean but like just doing like, like just going crazy and when she comes back just being like holy shit you know that's kind of like the love language so it's like by actions um, but yeah, uh, very, very specific and, and, uh, uh, like no, like a very, like not messing around attitude when it comes to love. Now with fifth house moon, there can be some level of like liking to have a little bit of fun here and there, a little flirty fun. Um, but yeah, overall, like someone who's super stable that, you know, a thousand million percent would never cheat on you. And you guys don't even have to talk about that. Like, you, you know, it's just like the, the, fa it's like the building of a skyscraper a huge building like the foundations are so solid that you don't have to even worry at all right now with um okay so 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 with some of these other aspects so let, let's let's kind of go down so with sun square um saturn i'll go back to my face you can see my my lip with my chewing tobacco it's very 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 attractive you can barely see it um that typically speaks um, to issues with the father. Um, now, it doesn't mean that the father and you had like a traumatic corporal relationship. I I mean, I see like with the Jupiter on there, I see that's typically a very like, uh, like, 
like a childhood where you learned a lot and you have a you you and it, it also Jupiter on the IC tends it's very good for career and it's very good for having this like inner well of optimism, right? Like just being a happy person. I see you as a happy person. Um but with Sun Square Square um Saturn, that's a pretty challenging aspect. Um and it, it just kind of like it tests you a lot, you know? Like there's lots of like like test like tests and challenges that you have to get through and overcome to get ahead in life, right? It, it's kind of similar to the Mars one, but a little bit different because um it can it can definitely early in life cause issues with self-esteem, which I, I already talked about the rest of your chart, how you have so many like a million points of that self-esteem. Um but yeah, usually it has more to do with like criticism from like like maybe it's like your father or the authority figures or whoever it is that held you to like such a high standard. Like, so it could be like, there's all love, but like, like such like a, a perfectionism that runs in the family. So for you, it's like, you know, how to break that, you know, and that can lead to you being really hard on yourself. Right. And then I, I told you like, like um critical of self-critical leads to critical of other people and this, that, and the third. Right. So, um, Usually people with this, they have to like, they feel like they have to like really grow up very quickly. That's like a very like Saturn Capricorn kind of uh, energy in general. Like um, they have to like step up like um, early in life to kind of like fill a role that usually like they'd be too young to fill. Um, but yeah, this this is one that, that by now has gotten a lot, a lot, a lot better. A lot of times people who have this are like late bloomers. But in your case with that grand trine, I just imagine that you just, you know had that determination and perseverance already like built into you. But uh, yeah, like so many people who have this, they, 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 they don't start necessarily from like a, a place of privilege, like, like financially, but like um, they, they really like, they use this, these setbacks as a motivation and they just like, you know, just go like they, they face lots of trials and tribulations, but it, it makes them like, you know, way, way, way stronger in the end. So Yeah. Yeah, I would define it as like, like, I don't know, like, 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 like I had a client recently who who had something similar, and it was like she had to like really like her parents were like working so much that she had to like take care of her younger siblings a lot, and and also do her school stuff, and she really had so much on her plate when she was younger, but then when she like moved out, she had this fucking crazy drive and this this like everything was so much easier, you know, and she had all her colleagues that were like. You know, they didn't ha have to go through that. And she had this like, you know, um, this, 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 this edge, I guess. Right. So. What else about that? But like a lot of times people find like an outlet for this, you know, like they find like an outlet. And for you, I'm curious to know what that outlet is. So, yeah, fuck. You're like, this is like a successful as fuck chart. And usually this success with Saturn comes after after 30. So it's no surprise that you're you're probably you're 87. So yeah. And also you might, I'm not are you 34, 35? I can't tell, but um one second. You'll be turning 35 in September. So yeah. So that, like, and this is more of like the current astrology stuff that we talk about. You'd be going into your 12 year, which is a very karmic year. But I have to be sure about the ages, and I'm not doing math right now. Um, so besides that, you know, um, talk about that. Uh, okay, yeah, Mercury. So Mercury and Libra, um, you know, typically – it gets very, very like kind of smooth, like diplomatic way of communicating. It's linked to your south node, so you're a skilled communicator for sure. It's karmic. Um, it also it's, it's close enough to your midheaven to like where you could be the kind of person that could have like two careers. You could, like you're very versatile. You could have like the money maker and then the passion, and then eventually the passion becomes the money maker type thing, right? Or just like someone who just has a lot. But yeah, like the like very diplomatic, very peace peaceful communicator. Um, the person that people come to, like, you know, when there's like, uh, like a very solid person that is like the middle ground, you know, that, that stays kind of like the Buddha, you know, and people come to them when there's a conflict and they, they resolve it. Right. Um, and really someone who can 
put people at ease with their communications. Now, let me look at something really quickly. I like this book because it gives, it gives me like little keywords. So, what? Well, I before even looking at, it, I can talk like. So that's that, and it's linked to your south node, but it's square Neptune. So this is difficult, right? And square ascendant. So basically, like, it can make it so like the way you communicate and the way you think can sort of be at odds with kind of how you project yourself, right? Um, and also there can be this like in like this like kind of paranoia that can kind of come up, like this like um like like you can be very 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 like genius and like super high up when it comes to like the higher like concepts you know um but then when it comes to the more mundane stuff having difficulties like for example like um someone says something to you and, and of course virgo has that tendency to overanalyze so this could like take a step further and create like this like like someone says something like how are you like how are you or how are you doing i don't know i can't think of something or like like uh says anything to you and you your mind can potentially like go to all these like places of like what does that mean what do they mean by that you know so um yeah it can like make make you see like the world through like a very like different lens than other people like a very distorted lens right which can lead to like different misunderstandings and stuff like that but also like at its highest it's like very very good for like being like someone who's very like the master of illusions who's very good with like the occult the esoteric and uh cr a creativity where uh your mind and your communication can be linked to this like to these other realms and you're able to like communicate these right but what can happen is that confusion can enter like close relationships um and um yeah so it can be it can be a little bit difficult on that level now i need to spit because i'm doing this chewing tobacco pretty attractive huh um so one thing I would say about this is like, it, yeah, it can, it can lead to someone being misunderstood, um, especially when young. This is more something that that's like like young. It can also like create like you know like kind of, kind of like a nervousness, like a mental nervousness type energy, um, and someone who's very sensitive to criticism, also. But it's very very good for like um, you know everything I, I talked about before, like um, you know creativity. Um, kind of linking your imagination like the, the higher like collective imagination with your mind all that stuff and um yeah it's super important not to like get into anything that like pushes those things further like um like scan like like scandals like lies gossiping um drug alcohol abuse cons you know like like anything like that um so with that said so venus so so here's another thing so so your venus is in um uh virgo as i mentioned um and let, let's see let's see what, what the keywords they, they had for that that mercury and neptune they said scheming tendencies um disposed towards deceiving others hazy thinking difficulty in concentrating but like I don't know, like the rest of your chart kind of like pushes a lot of that away because it's so solid. Now with, um, what was I saying? Venus square Uranus. And, um, I think that's the last like big aspect. Yeah. It's, it's more about, oh, and Chiron's also square, uh, squaring, um, squaring Venus. So the Chiron one can kind of create like, just like pain through relationships, I guess you could say. Um, and um yeah which can be difficult obviously but yeah with 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 the um with the blah, 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 blah. Uh, um oh wait I, oh, I forgot to say one thing with the mercury and the ascendant yeah it, it can it can kind of create that like backtracking a little bit with the mercury and the ascendant it can kind of just make it so like um yeah it, it, it speaks more to like the misunderstandings people can have of like what you're really trying to say because you might say things in like a, a way that are, that that it's very like artistic and smooth, but yeah, we'll talk more about that in the follow up. Um, with uh, um, where was it? Mars and no, no, Venus and and um, Uranus. So this is interesting because this is another one that's like all about like in relationships wanting change. 
and wanting relationships that um, help you in that track, that North node in the fourth house and Aries track towards individualism, right? So that's very important. Um, so what can happen when you have that is that you can be someone who like needs space and relationships, right? Who, who like um, can be very like, cause there's, I already talked about how like there's this need for like real, real, real closeness, but then also, um, you know, this, this energy of like kind of wanting things to be, you know, want, wanting space, wanting kind of an unconventional type of relationship. So you like, on one hand, there's like this very traditional side you are in, in relationships. On the other hand, there's like a side that like wants things to be a little bit, you know, unique and different. And, um, yeah. So it can, yeah, it can create sometimes commitment issues in relationships um, because there's this this need for like personal independence, which is like what you're you're really striving towards that in this lifetime, right? Um, so if like you're you're like, for example, a perfect example would be like in India, like the like the arranged marriages, like someone who had that who had this aspect would absolutely like hate that because they want freedom and they want choice and they want they want to you know have this like stimulation this excitement in their relationships so it has to you know also um there, there has to be like a freedom for you to express your imagination to express all your thoughts and um have someone who you have that intellectual connection with right um yeah so yeah, it's like this compromise between like being living alone, right? Like 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 having alone time, but then also like the close relationship. So it's important to have those like um you know, conversations. So it's like you don't want someone obviously who's like disloyal or so eccentric and like crazy, but also you know, you want someone who's very open minded, um and exciting, you know, someone who who brings something to the table. Um, you know, so yeah, freedom important in relationships. Aside from that, let's see one second. Aside from that, my friend, um, beautiful moments. Um, Pluto in the eleventh. Um, you know, the way I look at Pluto in the eleventh is like. Uh, groups of people like you, you you're really meant to like kind of like find uh groups of people that can help you with that individualization right um and when we talk in the follow-up i might have something just remind me keyword special group it's very secret though i don't talk about it um so it's it's like to the extent that a group like a friend group or organization or whatever like a larger group of people helps you like kind of break free from past life conditioning that's to where they're a good group or conditioning in general right you, like the status quo like you want to be like with people who who also can kind of help you um move to like spiritually like like help you in, in your spiritual life and yeah you'll have a very powerful presence in any, any groups that you're a part of and uh be very 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 ambitious in terms of your, like your your big life life goals if you want to call it that um it's also like you know a lot of people have this sort of like like drawn to like powerful like political groups um but like overall it makes you like really like strive towards like um forming like very very deep um friendships but like you might experience your shadow and like like difficult like like your shadow you know the, the whole death rebirth transformation through friendships so yeah, more, a little bit more about love. Juno and Aquarius speaks exactly to what I just said before. Um, Juno is kind of like your ideal mate, if you want to put it like that. So um, second house, obviously someone, you know, you, you know, who has that, that stability, whether it's financial or internal, both. But in Aquarius, it's like someone who is like also, you know, like on their path, like I said before, you know, with the Uranus one, like someone who is, you know, giving freedom, who is, um, you know, like their own person, who's not just like a fucking, 
like repeat clone, like corporate clone type person, someone who's who's uh, intellectual st- intellectually stimulating for you and who gives you freedom to um, you know kind of pursue your own personal goals and, and you guys come together that this down the third. Yeah, and then um, you know the the um, the North Node. I talked about that. You know, it's 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 all about just like being becoming more assertive and, and, and self empowered in this lifetime. Like there can be like a past life tendency of being a little bit indecisive, um, kind of acquiescing to the needs of others um, before your own. And it's all about like the, like I said, discovering your own identity because like south no like the past life tendency in libra it's like um there can be like issues of codependency like like relationships are the everything you know and you cut yourself off from exploring yourself by just being so linked to that relationship now it's also on the 10th house uh, close you know in the 10th house so there's also something with like um probably a tendency in past lives to be very like career oriented and like like a little bit too much so in this life it's like about not not being career oriented but really kind of going deeper into your own self deeper into your own self family life um you know domestic life stuff like that um like the 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 difference between like the outer life and the inner life and kind of finding that balance between the two like the kind of like like not being like someone who's just spending all their time working and not enough time like at home and, and doing that stuff so that's that's very important chiron in 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 gemini i see that with like so many of my clients it's like it's like this it's like at some point you know like people who have chiron there in sixth house it's like you're a natural healer um and healing can you know play like a is a, is a Virgo especially can play like kind of like a, a a large role in your like everyday life but in uh in gemini it's typically like um people who at some point like in their early childhood like like they 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 thought that like their way of thinking because maybe it was a little bit different with some of the things i talked about um was just a, especially with like the 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 mercury and the neptune was just a little bit different and there's pain and it it can create someone who kind of like gets down themselves a little bit you know and on on their level of like intelligence or thinking and they they, they kind of think like you know um like they, they 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 start to like not trust their own thought processes um and like fearing communicating with other people and stuff like that right so sometimes they have like communic- there's like communication issues as a child um like a painful like early schooling experience like bullying stuff like that so um yeah but really it's like um really really good for like tapping into like like the collective unconscious, like higher spiritual values and, and, um, kind of teaching other people, like, like once you find your, your, your own authentic voice, being able to be the kind of healer that can, whether it's professional or just personal, like teach other people how to find their authentic voice, the connection between heart chakra and throat chakra, and really having like, like really speaking your truth. Black moon Lilith in Leo. Interesting. Um, so Black Moon Lilith isn't a planet. Um, it's more of a um, kind of potential, if you want to put it like that. So um, in Leo, so it, it's kind of, so, so, so when you think of Black Moon Lilith, you think of um, kind of like what is the lowest vibe of Leo, which is obviously like, you know, like being like too much of a showman, um, you know, being someone who, I guess you could say like puts like two like 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 put like like puts um uh, like like, it, like it's all about me energy kind of right and I'm not saying you express express this I'm just saying it's a potential and sometimes people with black moon Lilith in um in Leo they can have this tendency to like think that they're the ones who are always doing so much for other people when really they're not like noticing like what other people are doing for them. You know what I mean? And um, one moment. I had this really interesting article I sometimes talk up. I look at because it just breaks down each black one to a fear. 
So it says fear of change. Big surprise at the Taurus. Uh, so Leo represents the ego and the position they achieved is so important to them because their own ego and self-esteem is linked to it. Integration comes from understanding that change is growth. Maybe you can't always be the leader, but it's fine. Maybe sometimes you can take the second place and bring other people up. By doing so, you'll actually feel great about yourself. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, one second. Oh, I need my charger. That's what my my in, my uh, antennas were telling me. <laughs> um, is it working? Yes. I have PTSD with chargers these days. Um, so aside from that, you know the fact that you have you know part of fortune and vertex in the eighth ninth house with all that Virgo is basically cherry on top, saying that you know. Like with the vertex, your doorway to higher awareness is through like finding that universal truth, finding like like um you know like what truth is to you, and then of course like taking that and putting it into your dharma, into your life work. And part of fortune is kind of like uh, saying something similar. That's kind of like where your flow flow state is. So it's you know right there with all the Virgo, and it's kind of just like um basically saying that like you know you find joy when you're, you know, being of service to other people. Um, like you find joy in like organization and cleanliness and, um, like, uh, yeah, like, like when you're, when you're really like, like going against like the bad low, like, like perfectionist have to be better than everyone else, like Virgo energy and finding that, like that, that earth magic. And yeah, like, Hard Fortune Ninth House is like finding joy through the experience of uh, discovering higher truth. Um, and like, yeah, like the spiritual realms, philosophical realms, all that stuff. Now, um, let's see here. So one thing about Neptune in the first house is there can be a lack of boundaries. Now you have uh, Capricorn rising, so that kind of like pushes a lot of that away but just by itself neptune the first house can um create some kind of like vagueness i guess and like the self-expression and um yeah it, i mean it's very very nice for like imp imp imprinting your imagination your dream life into your everyday life which goes perfectly with the whole manifestation uh grand trine but um yeah it gives you the real ability to like create like a fantasy world of your own but there's also this real need to like kind of clarify like who you are, especially as it relates to like, you know, your way of communicating and thinking with the Neptune's uh, square Mercury. Now, besides that, let me see if I see anything with the stars. I'm going to go to bed after this. Let's see. Uh, So, okay, nothing there. Mm -hmm. And also, like, another thing about relationships is that your descendants in cancer, so um, it just speaks further to, like, kind of, like, that that need for, like, stability and, and emotional closeness and, and um, yeah, stuff of that nature. In relationships. Okay, I'm not seeing any of the big stars. Let's uh let's do one more. Perfect this reading. No, it's scratchy. No, it's scratchy. Okay. Nope. Uh, okay. And then you have Zosma. So Zosma, good thing I know about it, is um, 
it's uh very linked to like things like astrology things like uh finding the mysteries in life right and you have that like i made a post a while ago where it's like the nebula um Zosma, or hydra hydra the nebula zazma were like the three like astrologer stars so you have that on your mars um but it's not just astrology it's just like like really really wanting to find truth so there's this great drive towards that and yeah that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed this reading um one moment though So you also have series. I didn't mention series. I don't know why I didn't show up my I need to change my, my, my chart stuff so I should series. Um in the twelfth in Sag. So um twelfth house series, it's like like basically like kind of going with what I was saying. What, what, you, you you nurture yourself by giving to others, basically. Um by giving to the universe. Um and it's like you you, you the spiritual lesson is like helping others who are suffering basically. And um, with, with in Sagittarius, it's like you feel cared for when you're allowed space, as I said before, to explore and, you know, reach your own goals and, and, and find that higher truth, that higher philosophy. So. Yeah. Anything else? So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed. 125. Of course, you can never ever get my readings to an hour. One day I'll be able to. Um, but yeah, let me know about the follow-up slash current astrology if you're interested in doing both together. I highly, 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 highly recommend. And um, yeah, uh, watch this. Uh, people usually watch this a few times. First time, well, it's kind of late already, but usually people just watch the watch it the first time with no notes. It's whatever, you know, but like most people that watch the first time, just get the intuitive flow of it. Then after that, they start taking notes. It's very, very deep stuff. So, yeah, look forward to speaking to you. Hope you enjoyed. Bye bye from Romania.